Well, I think it's fair to say that we now recognise that chronic lymphocytic leukaemia is quite unique in actually having a relatively high familial relative risk compared to most other cancers. The risk in first degree relative patients with the disease is increased about eightfold, okay, and that compares quite significantly different to most other common tumour types, for instance, colorectal cancer or breast cancer, which as you see, are featured about a twofold increase in risk in first degree relatives. Although it has to be said, in terms of absolute risk, the risk to the first degree relative is not high because the disease isn't actually that common, okay, in contrast to breast cancer, which is a common disease and therefore a twofold increase in risk does translate to a significant risk. It's fair to say that also now we actually do appreciate much more about the actual uh, heritable basis of that risk. So firstly, we've now got evidence from genome-wide association studies that in fact there is um, you know, direct evidence that there is a, a, a number of, risks of genetic variants that do in increase the risk of developing the disease. So it's the first direct evidence for it. Prior to that, it was simply epidemiological data, which is or in, independent evidence, okay, so there was no real direct evidence for that case, okay, right. The second point is that those studies have actually <clears throat> have shed a lot of light on the actual on the whole composite risk. Firstly, we know that about over 50% of the heritable risk of the disease is enshrined in these time of common variants. Okay. The next point that's of significant note is that those common variants actually map to a number of discrete pathways, for instance, DNA repair and those genes that are involved in B cell development. Okay. Um, and the final point is that, in fact, the risk variants map to non-coding regions of the genome, which, in, which have their effect through, through, uh, uh, through effects on um, the regulation of neighboring genes rather than actually existing within coding sequences of the gene. And I think those are really the key elements that have come out. There's also, I suppose, finally, there's some evidence that rare genetic variants actually also predispose the disease, although they're much more, obviously, much more uncommon, and they're probably their effect in terms of attributable fraction is much lower than that of the common variants.